so welcome everybody um would you be able to um turn on your cameras please uh, we'll start shortly um live on facebook hi this link hi everyone hi Anna. hi everybody hello okay so welcome everybody uh, to this online round table. Um, my name is Vesnik Lek and I represent YMCA organization in Kosovo and I'll be your moderator for today. The topic for this round table is contribution of youth on implementation of SDGs. This round table is a follow uh, of online serious conversation on celebrating 75th anniversary of United Nations. It is my pleasure to introduce to your dearest panelists, Ms. Jana Minoshkina, youth Peace and Security Program Coordinator, ANMIC, Ms. Abetare Goyani, Executive Director, IPCO Foundation, Mr. Jovan Zivkovic, Executive Director, Smart Klokot, Klokot Multi-Ethnic Youth Center, Mr. Bera Tachi, Executive Director, Bethany Christian Services, and Mr. Uh, Visar Haji Fazlio, Executive Director of Organization Thai. Attendees can write questions on the chat and I will read them uh, to our dearest panelists. So without losing much time, I would like to start with our uh, dearest panelist, Ms. Jana Minashkina. Could you please share uh, what is your organization doing shortly with SDGs that you're working on and how are young people included in implementation of the project and SDGs? Thank you, Besnik. Hello, everyone, once again. Uh, so my name is Jana. I work at uh, ANMIG, UN Mission in Kosovo, as the youth advisor and the coordinator of the Youth Peace and Security Program. Uh, just like for any United Nations organization, for us, SDGs are indeed the cornerstone of our efforts. And we try to build them throughout basically all the programs and all activities we're doing. And we work together with our colleagues as well from the UN agencies on this and with our implementing partners. So I'm in charge of the youth program. And the main idea of this, pro of this youth program is that Kosovo is very multi-ethnic and we try to bring young people together from all communities to address the problems that are uh, happening here and at the same time to create this sort of a youth movement, uh, which will share the idea of Kosovo as the shared home and um, you know, try to provide opportunities and support, to make uh, great things happen together with young people as the main actors, main uh, change makers on the ground for this, uh, for this process. So, and of course, uh, it strongly connects, first of all, with the uh, SDG 16 uh, about peace, justice, and strong institutions. We work a lot also on challenging stigmas and stereotypes. And I'm also very happy to see here Jovan, who is one of our trainers as well on those activities. So we work with a multi-ethnic network of young peace builders, the United Youth Task Force, uh, whom we basically supported uh, the launch of in uh, 2017. And by now, uh, from 20 initial people, it became the network of over 60 volunteers from different parts of Kosovo. So we do a lot of activities on breaking the ice between communities and providing the opportunities for young people to work together. And of course, it fits naturally into the other sustainable development goals, such as uh, the one on gender equality, the um, one on reduced inequalities on sustainable cities and communities. Uh, there was a brilliant example last year uh, when we tried to bring together those uh, elements and uh, also inspire the work on uh, climate change and inspire young people to come together to address this issue, which is the SDG 13, as you know. And uh, together with Gaia Kosovo, we organized uh, the first uh, ethnically mixed um, youth eco camp in um, Brezovica, when we spoke about the issue of the small hydropower stations, uh, the negative impact on the environment, and also what young people can do at the individual level to uh, you know to reduce the impact of the climate change to make Kosovo cleaner and um, healthier for everyone and another example also for SDG3 for example uh, about the health and well-being a few days ago um, our volunteers in uh, Lipian, Lipian uh, they supported the distribution of uh, face protection masks um, it was also part of our awareness campaign make your voice heard on inclusive youth participation and we went to different parts of the city on bikes, which was very fun and uh, engaging activity on itself to bring the posters about preventive measures against the pandemic, to the local businesses, and also to distribute the masks to those people who cannot usually afford buying the one 
I mean, there are many different elements and all of them, they connect uh, to one another. And we try to be creative, we try to be innovative and we try to empower young people to do those things. So we're just there to facilitate, but those are young people who are the main driving force for those things. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Jana, for sharing uh, what ANMIC is doing um, together with this partner organization implementing the SDGs. And uh, now I would like to pass the floor to Ms. Abetara Goyani, Executive Director of IPCO Foundation. You have around 10 minutes to uh, give us a presentation. What is IPCO Foundation doing towards SDGs? Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, inviting me to participate in today's event. Um, IPCO Foundation um, is uh, uh, supporting um, SDGs for many years now, uh, but the last year and especially the last uh, maybe six months, we are focusing on few of the SDGs through our uh, programs and projects, which is a SDG 3, 4, 5, eight, nine, and 10, so mainly good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation infrastructure, and reduced inequalities. Um, through our program, uh, we uh, tend to uh, highlight and strengthen the SDGs um, by supporting and also initiating our own projects, but also supporting our partners' projects and uh, building up new partnerships together. Few of uh, uh, the most highlighted project that I can mention today is uh, UNICEF Youth Program, which is Podium, and uh, together with UNKT, UNICEF, and DocuFast, we are doing it during this, uh, we are organizing through the DocuFast Film Festival, which is happening uh, starting on Monday of this week and we know that podium teaches teenagers and young people from the most mar marginalized groups in kosovo how to protect the needs and rights of their communities so it is an initiative that is uh, created to improve um, the resilience of adolescents and young people by increasing awareness of their rights uh, with podium during the pandemic especially we were very um happy to see that we managed to gather and uh, to um, activate groups of youngsters and yet come up with new ideas and support them towards the end of this program which is the mentorship program so we are very optimistic that uh, for this edition um, uh, the the uh, challenge or is uh, to um, we've added an additional module which is creating a short um, film and docufast will support the youth project to develop and execute their short film preferably in a documentary uh, format and as part of the vision for 2045 and also by addressing the SDGs priorities. Um, we also do Wikiponder online workshop, which is um, in, which increases the ability of uh, youngsters aged 14, 24 years old to critically read media, detect fake news, read and interpret images. We've been um, experiencing uh, the latest. Um, I mean, from March, since we are in this pandemic, uh, we've been um, uh, experiencing how important is media and uh, how critic we should be towards media and make sure what um, what news are we reading, sharing and also interpreting. So through this activity, we tend to give all the skills to youngsters and so that they can, after they get trained on how to write accordingly to Wikipedia rules, we manage to, um, uh, they manage actually to share and publish all their credible articles online. So topics will are as follows, hospital services, public health, health insurance. So this uh, workshop, uh, the last workshop that we did was in April of uh, this uh, year. Um, podium online per workshop, so um, it's uh, it's the same format as we are doing um, uh, next week with UNKT and DocuFast, uh, but we did in different also municipalities and we uh, had the, the, the topic was mental health during and after COVID-19. 
which was an uh, advocacy campaign, let's say. And uh, actually this initiated many great ideas from youngsters who uh, were able to share from their perspective how they can manage this, this situation in, uh, in Kosovo. We did this project in partnership with our partner PAN. Uh, we also did the Wikipondra online in hubs that we have together with UNICEF in Lipian and Jilan. So increase the skills of young people on, uh, on media and so on. Next, uh, we have Dokutak 2020, which is our annual event and actually our biggest event that we do at the Co Foundation. Uh, this um, uh, conference annual event brings together individuals, technology talents with high level international leaders, thinkers and creators. So we've been doing six editions so far, promoting education, uh, technology, informal education and hands-on activities and hands-on projects. So the Kutak explores and challenges the social implications of technological innovation through connectivity, content, openness, and security. Um, this year theme is interesting as we will discuss how we can reduce, reuse, repair, rebuild, renovate, refine, uh, recycle at the same time solving problems and meeting the needs of people all around the world. Um, we are having um, a, a live on August 15, starting from uh, 6 uh, p.m. Uh, the DocuTech will be showing two speeches uh, through the DocuFast Film Festivals, where I invite you all to, to come. Um, um, Vesnik, please remind me how many minutes I have, because uh, I would like to highlight some of other projects we do as well. You we still have... have. Yeah, you still have some time. Go okay. Ahead. We have Girls in ICT, which is one of our favorite projects that promotes uh, gender uh, equality and involving uh, women and girls in uh, education sector and also technology, most importantly, um, because we've been um, facing that many uh, girls and women are leaving behind technology, are left behind technology as, um, as a course of study and as a university degree, let's say, because they feel, um, they feel discriminated. So it's an international day that we celebrate every year. It's called Girls in ICT Day, and we usually uh, invite uh, speakers that come from uh, US, but not only US, also Kosovars that are now successful in, um, in the world. They come and share their story and inspires young Kosovars to um, to continue further. It's a combination of speeches, workshops, and also a job fair where we invite more than 30 um, companies from private sector that actually have open job positions, not only job, but also internship positions. And based on some studies that we did afterwards, we realized that 30% of the women and girls who uh, add, who have joined the internship program after Girls in ICT conference actually have a uh, um, credible uh, work, working contract, which is a very good uh, uh, feedback for us. Um, we also do bar camp, which is a simple format of uh, unconference. So you do not need to wear a suit and tie and come and discuss or listen or so, or share um, a recent trend from any sector, but you can come have a beer, a drink, and at the same time share and learn something new. We've started this voluntarily in Pristina in 2012, and now we are spread out voluntarily from different volunteers all around the or all around Kosovo uh, in uh, nine municipalities. We also have Costlift, which is a very unique project that involves um, a education sector for sure, private university, uh, at, uh, American University in Kosovo, but also UP, uh, Amer uh, University of Pristina students uh, from Kosovo to get to use the R&D lab, the first R&D lab we've created with Norwegian embassy that is placed in uh, American University in Kosovo. And uh, they um, 
uh, get trained by using those uh, facilities and equipment and also get uh, online courses, physical courses, but also live courses, live training courses, and also uh, participate in some design challenges that we call, will they get, they go more in depth by uh, focusing on the mentoring program, mentorship, and also uh, meeting with, um, meeting with different uh, experts from different fields and uh, building up their ideas. So um, I think I'm okay with what I've shared so far. I will continue or add more in a later time. Yeah, thank you very much, Abitar. It's really great to hear uh, uh, how much IPCO Foundation is, is doing and like the coverage that it's having within the regions in, in Kosovo and different activities, uh, which I think everybody would like to hear and to know like um, uh, about this great work that you're doing. So without uh, losing okay. much time, I would like to go ahead with uh, Mr. Uh, Jovan Zivkovic, Executive Director of Smart Clockot. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the invita invitation. Uh, I would just um, like to share a few examples of what we're doing. I'm um, Jana already did something. As well, I'm part of the United Youth Task Force. But big thanks to Jana and to Umnik, we did a lot of work uh, towards the SDGs. Uh, uh, for example, in quality education, uh, gender equality, peace, justice, and uh, strong institution, reduce inequalities, and so on. But I will just share some uh, of the example. For example, we organized uh, this year, supposed to be the fourth youth assembly, where we gather at least 250 youngsters where they can join with the decision makers but unfortunately we still wait for the because of the situation of the COVID but there are many things that we did we bring uh, people together for example uh, through the breaking borders through art where we connect education art and bringing people from different communities at the one place um, <clears throat> so we had the round tables uh, where we um, last year we did with five municipalities where we bring uh, local youth action councils um, to the municipality to discuss and make the strategy and try to push so they uh, include their strategy in the budget planning for the next year. That was the one um, activity which was done in five municipalities. This year we start with uh, 10 more. Um, then we had the roadmap uh, on first youth assembly on youth peace and security, uh, where it has four uh, pillars, participation, uh, prevention, uh, we had protection and partnership. So uh, those are still that we try to, to implement, which is great. I can later, if somebody is interesting, I can share with all of you. Um, in terms of health and well-being this year, um, thanks to Nick uh, in the Youth Center, we produced the face shield, which was uh, shared with um, police station, local embassies, um, hospitals, and now it's a plan to produce the mask as we did in Lipian and uh, sharing the, the, the mask the people who cannot afford because the, the situation is only, uh, as we see, is going worse. But I think we, we can face it. Uh, we did mental health online uh, trainings and uh, sessions because um, people, it was needed. We saw we did the, the survey and it was needed. And in the last three months, we, ha we as well had the, the, the mental health, uh, health sessions where we, um, had the trainers who um, help people in need. So those are some of the examples. And once again, thanks for, for the invitation. Thank you, uh, dear Jovan. Um, please feel free to use your time. There is still time, but uh, we will continue later on as well with other questions. But it's really great to hear about the great work that you're doing in, uh, with local youth actions and scaling up in different municipalities and the mental health that you mentioned. So I'll give the floor now to 
Mr. Beratachi, Executive Director, Beta Nutrition Services. Uh, hi to everyone, once again, and thank you very much just in the beginning. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to be part of this discussion, the final discussion today, and discussing a very valuable and fundamental issue when we consider as a social change in our country. Uh, also, let me wish to you that you have it, have a good time and you, this pandemic situation you pass well and wish to all of you good health in the future. Uh, when I said for this uh, uh, discuss or discussion or the available of this discussion, I uh, always uh, I see this situation that there's not a abstain from the professional value and the commitment of the rest of the population in each sector of the society. But when it comes to the young people, uh, then we can say with the full mouth that the force of the social change in Kosovo uh, between generations has been always the youth. Therefore, when I think that such, uh, I think of such thing, uh, I feel good today that I was uh, young uh, once. Uh, okay, let me say that uh, Bethany is an organization based in the community, which uh, mission is mainly supporting the people in the social and educational need, and also advocating on the human right. In, uh, it is worth mentioning that the beginning of our work, it is in the first beginnings of the post-war period in Kosovo 1999, uh, where the youth preoccupation was not so clear since the, we came from the system completely different from the other democracies, democratic system that we live uh, today. This was not only challenge for our beneficiaries, but also for us as organizers of the various youth activities. But in uh, Kosovo, it is a word that say, at a young age, you can do everything. And surely uh, this was a strong weapon in our hand for the social change to our country. Uh, also, we as an organization have been uh, quite focused on uh, working with minority community in Kosovo, such as Roma, Ashtali, Egyptian, and Egyptian, which in the same time posed a challenge in itself given to their poor social economic situation and distinct of their cultural uh, heritage. Uh, in this regard, uh, uh, we would like to thank all local organizations and especially international ones who believed in our work. We to manage, we managed to gain uh, experience and different methods of working with young people, which uh, we then begin to implement at the local level. Um, as always, uh, financial support was the main problem that preoccupied us, but with the help of the local and international donors. Today, we consider that we have realized enough activity, always keeping in mind that above mentioned uh, challenges. For 20 years, uh, our work with uh, youth has been mainly focused on their non-formal education through their engagement of them in uh, vocational and pre-vocational training, which has resulted in their academic development and employment. Also, their voluntarism uh, occupies an, an important place in our program, where mainly of uh, their engagement has been focused on their work as tutoring, such as we call tutoring class, in the educational program, as well in the organizing of uh, community and environmental activities. In terms of uh, youth activities, they have been mainly focused on uh, training, uh, advocacy, environment, and education. Perhaps it is uh, worth mentioning that many of those who were engaged as volunteers today continue their academic study or are self-employed in various organizations, which are often self-managed. It is worth also noting that some of them have been invited and presented as role models by various organizations. Uh, also, we can say that the youth program, it was just one of other programs that we have implemented over the year, because uh, as I told, 
uh, our focus has, uh, as organization, has been based in the community, in the community, uh, mainly with the educational support of the children in need and preventing their drop out of the school. Uh, I can add also here that uh, seeing the need of the community where we did operate so much, if we refer to the Roma actually Egyptian communities, uh, it was one of the uh, how to say on a challenge and uh, something that pushed us to uh, cooperate and collaborate with many other partners, which did offer many other opportunities opportunity and uh, many uh, programs to the youth by uh, which we did uh, considering that we did com uh, make a, we did uh, complete their uh, their uh, needs if I can say and uh, those organizations who did offer they were they did came from many different uh, missions which did operate in the field of let's say in gender quality basis or environmental programs or uh, improvement of infrastructure sometimes and youth infrastructure such such as it happened in our uh, uh, learning center in uh, there where we did operate and also different social economical support uh, also uh, I will not prolong so much my discussion just in the beginning in order to leave more space for the participants if they are interested in asking more about our experience. But let me thank YMCA one more time for giving to me this opportunity to talk about this very important sector of the society. And at the same time, allow me to wish all to the all young people August 12th, International Day of Youth, by wishing to them uh, the prosperity in all areas of life. May God bless them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Barrett. Uh, I'd like to thank again all of you on behalf of YMCA for uh, your time and contribution today. It was very interesting to hear uh, about what your organization is doing towards in involvement of Roma, Ashkali, and Egyptian community. At the same time, a good example that you mentioned that volunteers started to being engaged, like and employed, and, and be more active in. in uh, like civil society organization or different institution. So last but not least, we have Mr. Bisar Hajifazliu, Executive Director of Organization Thai. Would love to hear more about what the organization is doing towards implementation of SDGs and involvement of youth. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored to be one of the panelists together with all, the, all, all of you guys and seeing the uh, that currently the world is like home and the uh, place of 1.2 billion youths and recognizing the immense potential of this huge population, the agenda of 2030 strongly advocates for creating a safe and enabling environment for them, where they fully enjoy their rights and will grow as capable citizens and take responsibility for the future of this world. A few non-governmental organization and non-profit organization, which I'm working for, aims to channel the youth energy, students in particular, into constructive involvement in youth development and decision-making processes. Like we are trying to encourage tolerance and understanding among youth, uh, while promoting collaboration, communication, and integration with other youngsters in Europe. I guess one of the targets of the youth NGO, which uh, I'm leading off, is the particular interest is lifelong learning opportunities, which stands within the SDG 4. Nonetheless, our activities are aiming to contribute also to the other goals. As Mother Teresa said, like a little drop to this big ocean, namely, I can also mention some of them, like the goal three, five, seven, and eight. How we are doing this, Mainly, um, we are focused with the uh, Erasmus Plus program, which is within the European Union uh, Youth European program. Of course, we are uh, giving youth opportunities for the youth exchanges, seminars, and uh, training youth workers, which then they come back and then share their experience, experiences they have got during these trainings. 
Besides that, in the local activities, which I think another important aspect of this learning is youth in the community. We think that youth are primarily affected by these sustainability challenges as they have to live the bulk of their lives and facing the consequences of unsustainable practices like we have adopted by earlier generations. However, trying to give them an opportunities, which uh, we think that they are giving a change. And geo theory is uh, mainly or let's say active on different projects, which we are providing local, uh, lo to the local community opportunities to develop problem solving skills, decision making and leadership skills, which we think that uh, will help them to participate in the community development as engaged and active citizens. I guess uh, I'm not going to mention all the projects we are implementing and uh, we are doing further. If there is any questions by the panelists or the uh, people who are watching, I'm, I would be really happy to say more about that. Thank you very much, uh, Visar, and thank you for all the panelists for saving the time. Please feel free to uh, to speak more and share more about your great work that each organization is doing. So, uh, as uh, all of you have mentioned, that uh, your organization institution is working towards implementation of like uh, uh, SDGs. I would like to know more. How are youth responding towards implementation of SDGs? Like, how are getting their interest? Uh, maybe I would like to start with uh, with uh, Mr. Jovan. Uh, there, there is a big interest, I mean, among the youth um, during our work, we, we, we saw that and we are doing that. I mean, um, uh, UMNIC is doing great work because as they adopted its resolution 2250 on uh, uh, youth peace and security, um, but still governments need to, to adopt and to push more and to have uh, more local activities. Um, where you uh, youth can be engaged. I mean, everything which is great is on uh, youth initiative. So <laughs> we know that, but um, governments needs to do a bit more, a bit more on uh, including the youth because we saw that uh, youth can come together and youth uh, can, for example, in this period of uh, COVID-19, uh, you did a great work. Uh, basically with um, organization, uh, we covered 10 municipalities just based on one activity. Imagine if there is more um, uh, donors came to youth and uh, ask for their cooperation. So, I mean, there is a big interest. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. And um, I think the decision makers needs to hear and needs to cooperate for, um, for the better, better future because we are ready. Thank you very much, uh, um, Jovan. Um, since Jovan mentioned Anmik and Jan, I'd like to hear as well your perspective, Jan, since you work with partners and uh, I'm sure like directly on the field sometimes from your perspective, how do you see like how are youth getting involved in implementation of SDGs and like what do you do to get their interest or like what was your perspective? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Bisnik, and uh, special thanks to Jovan because he also covered a lot of our activities that I didn't mention initially. Uh, so indeed. I think the key element when we talk about the partnership and actually working meaningfully with young people together is that first of all, asking young people what actually they consider as necessary. And uh, when we started indeed, uh, it was 2017 and uh, UNMIC is actually one of the few missions in the world to focus on this youth peace and security agenda. Because there are many, many activities done by the UN agencies by different organizations uh, who address different angles. But what we try to bring together is the elements of SDGs and the idea of uh, the importance of addressing those as the part of the peace agenda. And we know that Kosovo is going through many transformational periods as well. And uh, there are still many barriers. There are still many prejudices between uh, young people from diverse communities. And also uh, not everyone is included. So um, often the um, um, different youth organizations and even the youth action councils, for example, even in the ethnic and mixed municipalities, they are often mono-ethnic. Or you would have the like, you know, similar structures for one ethnic group and similar structure for another ethnic group. 
And uh, what we try to do is uh, we simply try to provide the platforms for young people to meet each other, to uh, break the stereotypes. And I see a lot of interest, a lot of um, uniqueness of those moments uh, when people are able not only to share the study session together, but also to exchange, I don't know, to have a coffee together and to talk about a lot of issues that probably they heard a lot about, but they never dared, or never had an opportunity to ask from their peers from the other community. Uh, so when we started, we didn't want just to be a, another international organization doing something because we have our agenda, we have our resolution, and let's do something about this. We started with this consultation, which also gave birth to the United Nations Youth Assembly in Kosovo that Jovan also mentioned, which is now really an annual event. And we're trying now to find the format of bridging this also with the regional level. We have also young people from, let's say, Albania, Serbia, Montenegro, uh, North Macedonia coming over to Kosovo, meeting Kosovo reality, meeting Kosovo youth, and trying to do something together as well. And also connecting this with the Regional Youth Cooperation Office, speaking about partnerships, with the overall work happening in the region. And um, the first assembly was, in fact, a consultation. We had 140 youngsters from all communities on the spot. And uh, we also had 800 participating online afterwards. So we presented them this resolution on youth peace and security, which simply talks about the role of young people in building the everyday reality, in building the sustainable peace. And peace not only as the absence of war, but also peace of uh, living together, accepting each other, uh, being aware of the diversity, celebrating this diversity together, and uh, being responsible citizens while doing things together, addressing the problems that we all have as uh, one community, not by the ethnic divides. And um, from this, we have uh, 50 recommendations, which are written by Kosovo youngsters, in fact. And it was very interesting to see how much they connect also with SDGs. So a lot of them would be actually, in the UN language, will be immediately translated into the SDGs. So indeed, asking, answering your question about the demand, it is the demand coming directly from young people themselves, sometimes even without knowing about the SDGs. That's what they look forward to happen in Kosovo. And then uh, we had also the mapping study. So we worked together with uh, different UN agencies, with the Kosovo Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports, with the OEC, to see how we can separate these areas of work and uh, how we can take lead on different parts of the roadmap on youth peace and security. So for us, uh, we picked up on three main ones. One is the inclusive participation in decision-making processes. And that's the work that also Jovan was mentioning about the work with local youth action councils, work with municipal authorities, work with young people themselves. So they don't uh, get included at the final stage when let's say, I don't know, the local authorities or the ministry need to run some kind of strategy uh, related work, but they involve throughout all stages. They're part of the process since the very beginning and they also feel ownership of this. Uh, that's one element. Another element is uh, creating these opportunities for multi-ethnic work on different things on the problems that young people identify themselves. So it's not us telling them what to do, but actually the ideas come from uh, youth themselves. And uh, for me, one of the most valuable lessons of this program is that um, we started to offer the grants, not to NGOs, but to small scale youth led initiatives themselves. And uh, a lot of these elements uh, that bring together the SDGs, that bring together even science, we have this beautiful initiative under one sky, which was launched by the group of youngsters, the Astronomy Club of Kosovo, uh, who was usually working in Pristina and these parts. And uh, they started to engage youth from Gracianica, but also it became the initiative which is happening now coastal wide. When the group of youth come with uh, telescopes to different areas, they introduce astronomy, they talk about this. And it closely connects with the SDG on uh, education, on gender uh, equality as well, because often those are young girls coming to those areas and breaking the ice and talking about science and um, education. I mean, there are many different elements and I see clear demand from young people. I fully agree with you on that. Indeed, uh, we need to strengthen the work with the uh, local government uh, to have a bigger ownership and also bigger um, demand from them calling for young people to be more involved. Because indeed Kosovo has the youngest population in Europe. And at the same time, often these young people are the most excluded ones. And uh, often they lack belief and uh, the sense of perspectives in staying in Kosovo. And would also closely connect with other issues because I think if we manage to work together in a bigger partnership with the government, with media, with youth organizations, with private sector, with uh, innovation centers around Kosovo, with um, institutions like with schools as well, with universities, 
If we are managing to address those ones, we'll also create better perspectives for young people here. And then we'll address the systematic problems such as uh, migration, the brain uh, drain, and with so many young people not seeing their future in this. We also will manage to have this uh, spaces where young people are free to be themselves without fearing being uh, judged of which community they come from or which language they speak. Uh, when young people will simply feel that they belong here and they can uh, build not only their future, but also their day in Kosovo. And I think this is indeed very important to respond to this needs to hear young people since the beginning, to try to respond to their need of being included throughout all stages of the process and to work together across all sectors to create those opportunities. Um, yeah, I don't know if I answered the question. I hope Thank so. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And I mentioned really some good points and as well regional, co uh, regional cooperation uh, between countries, ownership of youth and breaking gender stereotypes and involving young girls to uh, uh, actually pursue uh, 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 different careers on, on science and like this is something that's needed, especially in Norwegian. So I would like to continue with uh, Ms. Uh, Abetare. Yes, I think uh, most of what I would share, Jana just covered. I will just uh, highlight to reinforce in our collaboration um, between local NGOs in Kosovo and maybe reinforcing the youth assembly that was just created. And uh, even though maybe not all of us might have a specific role on that, it is good for us to be at least informed about what the role of a youth assembly is or what we can share even though if we're not active um how to say directly or active participants of that uh, youth assembly how we can help um, the members to um, share our thoughts and uh, our worries and uh, how we can work more closely together and um, get our words to the youth we've seen that everything was much easier for us when reaching the youth uh, while we could go direct, directly to them or travel to them. So do open houses, live open houses, get the word to them. But now all of that is done. So we're doing that from home and we're actually getting into uh, their access of internet. They're only maybe free tool they had to explore for themselves. We're hacking that as well with information that okay it's useful all of us is doing a great job but uh unless it is something very attractive or very well presented they will not stop to read or listen to us so i think uh, by using all these um uh sources and groups of uh, people organizations that you jana mentioned and jovan but uh Jana, for you, I'm referring to you as you are the rep representative from uh, UN, is um, easier to come from you, like uh, helping us to get together and see uh, what can we do more during this uh, pandemic, because we, we are, we are um, uh, facing that this is not short, this will not be done by September as we all thought it will. So uh, we are going to have new projects and implement new pro and apply for new projects, but the, the uh, how to say, uh, the outreach part of our uh, project concept is is very challenging for all of us. So how we can join together forces and build up something great. What we did, for example, with our other organization, partner PAN, uh, during this time, it was that just in March, and uh, it was actually a second part of March, we discussed on how we can switch podium on doing it online and tackling the recent topics and how we can yet attract uh, youngsters to come and re register to access our, our training and we did then it it was great so because everyone is sharing their own uh, experience it's a challenge for all of us even though we say oh we have no challenges we all know that is not true because this is tackling all of us in a way or another so now i think since this uh, pandemic is going to last longer and we are yet scary about our uh, partnerships about our one year projects that we have what is going to happen are there are we going to have a second phase or so by joining forces i think uh, we will also 
be able to present ourselves in a more serious way to the youth. As uh, of the question that Besnik initially referred, yes, I think the youth is getting used to the term SDG, or to the all SDGs we are promoting and that exist. Uh, but I still believe that it's always much more to do in terms of promoting and uh, awareness campaigns about what are SDGs. Therefore, by collaborating with organizations who do uh, SDGs indirectly, but maybe they're not, they do not write them as a title, we can find the ways on how to beautifully or more simplest way to present them and uh, get youth to not be scared that, oh, what's the term SDG? But uh, I mean to accept it because they, then I believe that all of them would realize that they were part of one of the SDGs in a way or another. Thank you. Thank you, Abitare. Uh, I would like to hear as well from, uh, shortly from Visar and Mr. Berat. We'll start with Berat, you? We'll start, we'll start with Visar and then we'll go okay. to Mr. Berat. Okay, okay yeah, thank you. Um, as, as, as the NGO, like we are trying uh, right now to cover more on a local level uh, through this year, as mentioned before, like knowing the situation, we are like trying for uh, several years working on establishing a, a, or helping the municipality of prison, like establishing a youth center, uh, considering that the prison is like the second city in, in, in Kosovo and uh, the number of youth are quite uh, relevant, but there is not uh, a single youth center in prison. Therefore, we, we, we aim that uh, through activities and through capacity, which we did, and the working with the other uh, youth organization, right now we are uh, establishing a network of youth organizations, which is currently working in prison and trying to help on the youth sector. Through this, of course, as mentioned before, like I went through the global, but also if you want to change like globally, like uh, but act locally, like the famous quote, and through our youth workers and volunteers, we are trying to keep uh, the uh, regular activities at the same time waiting this uh, situation, like the pandemic situation to overcome and then continue again with our, our, our uh, activities, like uh, as mentioned before, of the Erasmus Plus. Nevertheless, uh, as uh, youth NGO, we are also part of different uh, network uh, NGOs. One of that I would also like to mention, which also we are on the board of the, it's so-called like network of cultural organizations, if I can translate for, from Albania, like we, the Organizator of Kulturas, uh, through which they have been a significant part of decision-making processes uh, regarding youth and cultural activities in prison, as well as the, from the initial uh, phase, we have been organizing team of the National Youth Congress. Uh, with them, we have been like engaged also through like past three days organizing topics on uh, different, uh, like organizing panels on different topics within these three days. Um, uh, yeah, I think for now this is that, and uh, we hope that uh, together with the municipality of prison, uh, having this kind of youth center, which we propose to them, having like a role model also for the other organizations. And that's why also sometimes it takes more time and more uh, resources in order to establish this kind of youth center, which uh, we have been working for it for uh, several years. Thank you, Visar. Uh, Mr. Berat. Okay. Uh, in general, I can say that was many of things was mentioned by our colleagues until now. I just can add something that has to do, let's say, first with the life of youth in our municipality. I will refer to the local situation first, that uh, the life of uh, youth in Jakolov, for my opinion, is very poor for the moment, including here also the 
this pandemic situation that happened for this five months, to not mention maybe will be will prolong the situation. By the way, uh, from our perspective or our opinion is that uh, in general for this 20 years, we didn't saw any initiative from the all governments that did govern with our municipality that they give them a right place to the youth or they did provide really good policy for their uh, integration and in, in general their prosperity in the life. Uh, many of the activities were focused on uh, on the institutions, let's say on the schools, on the let's say music school, on the sport, in those that are formal teams, let's say, but nothing were done not in sense of uh, giving them more opportunity to have the youth centers where they can explore their uh, abilities and really they can provide such as I, I think maybe many of you know for uh, this uh, youth center Bonnevet that is in Jacoba. That was uh, really one of the examples to that show what really can do the youngers if we give them much more opportunity. I don't say that uh, we're not done anything in that sense for these years, but uh, uh, let's say just for, let's start from the financial, fi fi financing of the project, youth project, let's say. Uh, just uh, when you see the budget in the municipality, you see that very low uh, level, of, very low uh, value of the money are going to keep, be given for the youth sector. Just last uh, these two years, we were for first time given 20,000 euro for youth activities, and all others are going to be implemented from the uh, Directorate for Culture, Youth, and Sport. What I want to say is not problem how much money you are going to give, because the uh, possibilities working with youth or the work with youth is in continue continuation always. You never can say that we give did give enough for them. Uh, but problem is that they look uh, the youngers as a community that we must think for them. No, we consider something different. In that way, must change this mentality. Must be, be more cooperative with the youngers, getting their needs, getting their vision. How does they look their future? Because finally, we work for them. We do support them. It's in our. It is. Uh, how to say, uh, life low in kind of that we think for youngers and they think for their future in sense to support their activities. And uh, this uh, always I was, uh, if I can say fighters to give them more opportunity and more uh, possibility to give them more, uh, more uh, possibility and opportunity to show themselves. Also, uh, supporting them by our professional, uh, professional uh, uh, professional, uh, not abilities, but uh, uh, experiences, experiences, Pro professional experiences, for example, maybe today I cannot more uh, do some of projects that I have done before 20 years, but I can provide many other services they can use, for example, many of us as uh, good, uh, I think as people that have good experience from the past, let's say. And in that sense, I, I so much, I'll be, I'll be increase my voice to give them more, more independence, more opportunity in every kind of, in all the fields, because we have a really good uh, youth in Kosovo and such as Jana did mention, uh, I cannot uh, move the prejudices from the youngers if I'm going to say them, you have to lose them. They have to lose themselves. We, can, we must give them opportunity, they to discuss between themselves and they to find the problem, what, where is the problem between themselves. To not mention that sometimes we are a big problem between them, <laughs> between the youngers. Uh, for that I said, give them their hand the possibility to pass all this problem that they have. Uh, this is for the moment. I told you, speaking for the youngers has, uh, it's needed much time and uh, have to contribute so much. Never can be uh, enough. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Barrett.
So to connect a bit to what uh, Abitara talked about, some, uh, some of the challenges that we are facing uh, during COVID while implementing the SDGs, we actually have a, a question from one of our attendees. And the question is that COVID-19 has set um, uh, SDGs back a bit. How can youth and society use this opportunity to build back, uh, to build this time better, especially not to go back to some of the harmful practices in environmental issues, non-critical thing education, and other stuff that are basically holding us back because of the COVID crisis. So uh, whoever would like to answer, I'll, I will leave the floor open. Do you keep it under two minutes, please? Okay, may I continue because uh, just I have in short something. Sure. I, I wanted to add also that, well, I have speak in general for the youth, but always, uh, even that we don't like to happen this situation, this is present to us. When we refer to the minority communities, especially for Roma, Ashkali, and Egyptian in Jehovah municipality. Uh, okay, it was done so much regarding to their education. We did work so much for their reintegration into the public school. But when we speak about, also today we have the students from this community. We have uh, some scholarship that was given to them. But now, if we refer, such as you mentioned, to the pandemic situation, uh, this did show another, one more time, how much they are, uh, uh, sensitive yet as a community when I speak about their social situation. Until now, from my experience in Jakova, I know for only for one person that belong to this community that, that is uh, infected by COVID. But I'm sure that in this community has much and much more people. And uh, does it mean this is uh, one of the photography of that how does we work with the community, especially with the minority communities, which, uh, which present in, in uh, same time, first, interesting of the, our government, and second, time, uh, second thing is uh, the coming from himself community, how much they are going to be engaged to treat their problem as youngers. Does it mean how much we give them possibility and how much they are ability to treat this problem? In that sense, I consider not only with COVID, but with many other problems they have to, we must uh, give them opportunity to be together and starting to discuss, to, to increase this, this debate between these two parts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Berat. Uh, someone else? Yes, Jana? Mm -hmm. uh... Well, with regards to the question, indeed, the pandemic has affected young people uh, disproportionately. It took away the opportunities for the proper quality education of uh, meeting the peers, interacting with them in real life. Um, it also put at risk many girls because, because for them it was also an opportunity to be more independent, to um, gain more freedom, perhaps, by attending the school and the university. And now many of them will be um, you know, more stuck at home and at the same time probably facing more depression if that's the case. Uh, it also put the challenge on the mental health issues. But from the other hand, building on what Abitara mentioned, uh, it's also uh, because of COVID, we're now um, sort of invading the sphere where young people are the strongest, uh, young people are the digital natives. And we're now trying to take over internet, trying to provide these opportunities. But also, I think it's very important to understand that uh, that's where we can learn from young people themselves. And that's where we can also seek these partnerships. Uh, because I think the key elements uh, which would also help not only to address the SDGs, but also for all of us to go through the pandemic in a you know, more resilient and healthier way, uh, it's the awareness of what's going around us and uh, also with the most vulnerable groups or areas where usually we don't see things happening. Um, it's about trying to reach out to, I mean, in this case, different even NGOs working with um, vulnerable groups. Uh, different NGOs who work, for example, on environmental issues, because while we are trying to stay at home and uh, keep all the preventive masks, I think it came to my attention that at the same time, for example, in uh, Brezovica, in Jakova, in Bia, the construction of hydropowers is continuing, and uh, there are many violations happening around this. So there is a severe environmental damage happening while we try to focus on something else and lock within our houses. Uh, so the first element is awareness trying to use the internet to actually educate ourselves about what happens around and how we can be also involved while probably staying home, while being safe, while using all the protective measures. 
but how we can use our voices to react to those cases. Uh, the second element will be being proactive. Uh, what we tried to do in the first months of pandemic, we organized um, online meetings between young people from diverse communities and uh, municipal authorities in their municipalities. And it was fascinating to hear first how much work was already done in partnership with youth, when indeed young people became the, um, you know, this, uh, people running with bicycles, people trying to connect with communities, with vulnerable groups, the volunteers distributing the masks, uh, doing the, um, I don't know, the soup kitchen, like a lot of these things happening, the young people were the drivers of this. And they were the first helpers of the municipalities. I think municipalities also realized how important it is to have those partnerships. But also going beyond just using the volunteer force of young people uh, to actually involve in them throughout different levels. I was very happy when I learned that in Wushtri Wuchtern, for example, they involved the local youth action council into the municipal emergency committee. So actually, since the very beginning, young people were part of this, they were part of the discussions about where to send help, how to reach out. And I hope it will also translate later into young people being more involved in more peaceful times and better times when we're out of COVID. Uh, that's the element. And uh, I think the third element will be peer support. Because indeed, when we speak about pandemic, there is also a disproportionate element on mental health, on um, you know, those who were excluded before they even more excluded often. So how we can work together with young people to have those opportunities of peer support, whether it's simply peer discussion groups or thematic clubs or whatever else. But here, indeed, we're stepping into the space, uh, the internet, which became our main communication channel, which is owned by the young people as digital natives. How we can build on this and how we can work together across different sectors from the United Nations, from the private sector, civil society, educational institutions to strengthen this message and actually to create something else. And perhaps even, um, I mean, now um, I'm working with the team of young peace builders from different countries, uh, because finally, without the travel costs, without um, you know, a lot of things that uh, logistically heavy and organizational heavy, we can create the spaces for young people from different countries to interact with each other. And this opportunity, of course, existed before, but probably nowadays we have more uh, chances to use them. So perhaps we can also think out of the box and even in the areas where we already are working, how we can um, you know, create these channels in the region, uh, across the globe and connect more young people with each other. And perhaps great ideas can come out of this as well. And also showing the power of youth to the local governments. So the local governments understand they need to work together with young people. They need to uh, count them as partners, not just the beneficiaries or like, you know, tick the box target groups for the beautiful picture but somebody who is part of the process since the beginning. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jana. And as you stated again, like uh, um, the importance of involving the government uh, uh, in, in these actions in terms of like speeding up the process that we're trying to implement. I would like to hear if somebody else would like to share about the challenges that they faced during COVID in terms of the implementation uh, of the SDGs or any last thoughts since we're coming towards the, the end. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Spent, for, for the question. I think that, uh, in general, the uh, not just COVID set back a bit like the youth sector, but focusing on local level, I think that youth has been always kind of the second, uh, second range, was not the, always the first focus. Even if sometimes we consider like in local level, we do have like the, the department of the culture, youth and sports, and then they do mo mostly like projects and everything on, on sports and culture, but uh, less, I mean, in few municipalities, maybe also in youth. And the approach or this approach, I would like to, to, to say that it's not that, as mentioned also before uh, here, that it's not uh, that we are uh, fulfilling our mission as the youth organization or as the youth sector only by giving the uh, money in the end. But through, we think that, uh, however, just the being aware of the problem, it's not being aware of, of the problem alone is not enough, but through the working all together. And uh, right now we do have this opportunity, like using the, this technology, uh, which allow us to reconnect, let's say, in an easily way, and recognizing that the youth, the youth uh, has the creativity and potential and capacity to tackle all these issues and introduce the real change 
for themselves and their communities as well. And of course, this contributes also to contribute on the rest of the world. Uh, I think that through this uh, youth takes uh, through the kind of what we are doing here about the lifelong activities on life learn, life learn, lifelong learning process, sorry, uh, is uh, as we call it also like the transgressive learning uh, through non-formal education activities to action oriented, empowering them and focuses on community learning will contribute directly on this sustainable uh, development goals in in, in in near future. Thank you, Visar. Um, somebody else, if you have any uh, comments. If, yeah, um, you no, I'll just add that uh, the, the change makers and the international, they should see youth uh, as a partner, as Yana said. Um, and I think education is a key as well, because uh, um, I'm coming as well, I graduated at AUK. I was the generation which went to AUK and um, for the first time had a chance uh, to meet people, um, not just here in the region, but all over the world. And we did so many actions and so many activities through AUK than what was done through the, the governments and through through uh, other agencies. So the education is as well the key for the changes as well. So that's my last comment. Thank you, uh, Jovan. Like us, it's really important. Education is the key. Like it's a tool to uh, prepare young people uh, to give their contribution in, to making the world a better place. Um, so uh, we're almost like towards the end uh, of this call. If somebody has any burning uh, uh, answer or like uh, uh, comment at the end, please uh, let me know. If not, um, I would like to thank again all of you for your time or dearest panelists uh, for this roundtable on the uh, theme contribution of, young, of youth on implementation of SDGs. I think we got like uh, different perspectives from different organization and institution what are you doing and how are young people being involved in implementation of SDGs, despite the fact that we're facing the COVID crisis, especially the 75th anniversary of UN, uh, that everybody is involved in, uh, in, while trying to implement their strategies. Um, I would like to wish all of you again a good uh, weekend ahead, and I would like to thank you for your time. Uh, we will share uh, with you now a, a video called We the People that talks about SDGs. And again, I would like to wish you good health and being safe, especially during these times. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks a lot as well. Maybe we can call your answers to you. uh, answer the survey uh, so they give their contribution and what they want. Uh, sorry, can you repeat again? Uh, I just want to call uh, uh -huh. youngsters to fill the survey uh, UN75, so they um, ask their question to... Yeah. Yeah, okay. De definitely, I will share it in our social media. So thank you, uh, Yvonne, for reminding us on that. Thanks. So Thanks a lot. Thank you again to all Bye. of you. And thank we'll you. close now with the video. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay, thank you. Stay, stay safe and healthy. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. When no one goes hungry. When no one wakes in the morning asking if there will be food today. We will live in a world where no child has to die from diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy.
energy for everyone. Heat, light, and power for the whole planet. Without destroying the planet. We don't live in a world where economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industry our infrastructure and our best innovations are not just used to make money but to all make all our lives, lives better. better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated inside our countries and between different countries. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe and progressive and support everyone who lives there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat of climate, climate change. Where we restore and protect the, the life, life in our, our oceans, oceans and seas. We <laughs> restore and protect life on land, the forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. And answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. We're all countries and we their people work together in partnerships of all kinds to make these goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations Global Goals for Sustainable Development. Let's, Let's get, get to work. work. Let's make it happen. So thank you again to all of you and uh, wish you a good weekend ahead and have a, a safe day.